All right, so this week, House Republicans voted to remove Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar from the House Foreign Affairs Committee, fulfilling a long sought conservative wish. The move comes after Kevin McCarthy blocked Congressman Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell from their appointments to the House Intelligence Committee. Another far-right dream come true. And I'm going to have a whole lot more on the double standard when it comes to Ilhan Omar later this evening. But first, let's recap some of the other important agenda items, I guess, for Republicans this week. Um, among them, they uh, included fighting to allow lawmakers to carry firearms into a congressional hearing. Uh, holding a meaningless vote condemning the, quote, horrors of socialism, turning a hearing on pandemic aid into an unhinged goose chase about, yes, critical race theory, and filing articles of impeachment against the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Joining me now to discuss this messed up week of priorities of House Republicans is Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett of Texas. Congresswoman, thank you so much for coming back on the show. It is great to see you again. First, uh, I'd like to get your reaction to the decision um, of the DNC to change the presidential primary calendar. South Carolina will now be the first state to vote. Nevada and Michigan have also moved up in the calendar. Iowa has also moved up in the calendar, and the DNC basically says that reflects the diversity of the Democratic Party earlier on in the process, which is significant. Your thoughts? No, I, you know, I'm out of Texas, <laughs> and Texas is normally one of the first states. In fact, I had the first primary um, this past cycle, and so, you know, we don't necessarily need Texas leading on very much in this country. Um, we have seen where we go when Texas is in the lead. And so, no, I absolutely think that it makes sense. I think that we should have something that's a little bit more reflective of who we are in this country, because there ends up being, like, a rhythm that we hit. There's a stride that we hit. Um, so often people talk about Biden, and they talk about South Carolina, and they talk about the, the shift um, in that rhythm. And so I think it's important that we have those diverse voices that make up who we are in this country um, weighing in earlier so that if there is a direction that we're going in, we are going in the direction of the majority of the people that actually subscribe to the Democratic Party. Um, let's get back to the Republican priorities this week. Uh, I went through some of the uh, list of priorities. Um, among them, your um, Republican colleagues removing uh, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee. W what did you make of how all of that played out? Listen, um, you know, it felt like I was back in the Texas House for a second, um, where we do a lot of harmful things, where we do a lot of racist things. Um, this was not about anti-Semitism at all. If it were, then definitely there were a lot more people that needed to have been addressed on the Republican side. Um, I was unable to actually participate in debate, but one of the things that I was able to do was a one minute that I did not get to finish. And that one minute was all about what was her crime. And so what I did is I brought out this glaring disparity as it relates to George Santos and his ability to be seated on committees before most, if not all, Democrats were seated on committees. Um, and the fact that they decided to basically manhandle him and say, hey, we need you to go ahead and stand down off of your committees. Let's make it look voluntary um, because we're going to go after Ilhan and we know that you have a lot more issues that you're facing than she is facing. Right. And so I decided to make sure that I made it clear that she had not committed a crime, not even been alleged to have committed a crime, yet someone who... Um, has allegedly committed crimes not only here but abroad, was absolutely seated on his committees with no questions, no qualms. As I mentioned, you got Republicans holding symbolic votes on the, quote, horrors of socialism. They want to impeach the Homeland Security Secretary. They want members of Congress to be able to carry firearms into committee hearings. Can you just tell us, like, when you bump into, like, Republican colleagues in, like, the cafeteria on Capitol Hill, are, are they kind of looking at you in embarrassment? Like, do you look at them and say, like, what are you guys doing? I mean, are they, do they actually believe this stuff or are they just, you know, held hostage to their leadership? 
So I'm going to tell you like this. Um, I don't really know what most people's perception of Marjorie Taylor Greene is, but she really doesn't talk to anybody. She just kind of like moves about the Capitol in her own way um, alone. And, you know, the interesting part is she and I had a back and forth this week because I introduced um, the amendment so that we could bring back the Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Subcommittee to oversight. And, you know, for a second, I thought she was going to vote for my amendment. So I was like, go Marjorie. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you know, she had the wrong reasons for wanting to support my amendment. But ultimately, she did not vote for my amendment. But she honestly operates by herself. We see George Santos by himself very often. You see Matt Gates by himself very often. They're not actually um, hanging out together, which I think there is this idea that they kind of like are buds and they hang out, um, but they really don't. They kind of like are loners and <laughs> many of the policies that they're pushing, you know, we saw McCarthy trying to separate himself from Marjorie Taylor Greene's position as relates to my amendment and this false uh, equivalency that was drawn by Marjorie when it came to Tyree Nichols and Ashley Babbitt. He decided he wanted to dis distance himself. And so that's honestly what I feel when I look at the Republican Party is that they are constantly trying to distance themselves from the problem people, but they still support their policies because they feel like that's the only way they can be reelected. Whereas Democrats overall, I feel like we're unified. Can I talk to you about your efforts here for a moment? Um, you, you just alluded to it. You know, you've got the Republicans trying to get rid of the House Oversight Committee's subcommittee on civil rights and civil liberties. You uh, are leading the charge to reinstate that subcommittee, as you just mentioned there, with that amendment in light of the death of Tyree Nichols. Um, does that mean now that you don't have Marjorie Taylor Greene's vote that there's no hope for this? Or where, does, where do things stand on that for effort for you? She voted against me. <laughs> She voted against me, you but she's You can't said, be surprised, Congresswoman. I got to say, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but she said she agreed with me, so I thought we were vibing, you know? Um, no, but she said that she agreed with me. She also said that there needed to be an investigation as it relates to um, the, the conditions in jail and prisons, and I agree with that. Right. Now, granted, her concern was for January 6th people versus, huh. you know, the fact had some issues overall um, when it comes to She thinks the, the January 6th insurrectionist civil rights have been trampled on. Is that, am I getting that right? Correct. <laughs> Correct. So she, so I was, so I was like, okay, we, we should get to the subcommittee and then we can explore uh, <laughs> these things. But uh, I don't know really what her reason was for voting against me because she seemingly was agreeing with me even though she was agreeing for all the wrong reasons. Right. But at the end of the day, if I can get agreement, I'm here for it, right? Like that's what bipartisanship is, it's right. agreement. It doesn't matter what the motivation is. And so, you know, I, I thought that I was really gonna do something that hadn't been done in a while, but clearly that I was wrong. That so, would have been a scene uh, to have you and, you and Margie Taylor Green hand in hand, we'll see. Anything is possible. Uh, Congressman Jasmine Crockett of Texas, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Best Good of luck to you in your efforts. Yeah.